Hello everybody. Hello, nice to Welcome. see you again. Yeah. Hi. Welcome to the video for um, English as a medium of instruction, instruction for academics, uh, week two. Yes. And we'd like to thank you very much for watching this video, for continuing your participation. Mm. Um, again, lots of interesting comments are happening in both week one and week two. Fantastic. So thank you very much yeah. for those. Uh, we're going to answer a couple of questions we've had for this week, uh, which are from Salam and Deborah. But we'd like to, um, first of all, just uh, have a quick chat about this week and other things that are going on. So, Mary, I'll hand over to you first. OK. Um, yes, if you do have questions, um, please post them in the section um, that's called Video Activity for Week. Well, three it will be next Video week. updates. Video updates. Yes, that's yeah. right. Yes, thank you. No problem. And um, uh, we will then be able to look at those and then answer them. And any other comments might usefully be put in that section also. Um, and don't forget, we also have a Twitter account, which is hashtag F-L-E-M-I, Flemmy, if you like. You could also post a question that way. Um, one of the things that I would like to um, mention from week one, and it's the sort of comment that you might like to put in this section of, of, of the MOOC. Um, somebody, I think his name was Simon, mentioned that he wanted to read an article that we'd recommended, but it wasn't on open access, so he couldn't get a hold of it. Now that's the kind of thing that, you know, please tell us and we'll see if we can do something about it. Because I have tracked down this article and there will be a link to it available next week. It's an article um, by a lady called, oh now what was her name, forgive the pronunciation, uh, Ragnar Hild Lossland and it was about um, English policies and multilingual practices in a Norwegian university and in fact somebody else um, expressed an interest in reading that but it wasn't available. It will be available next week. So little things like that, it's good if you, you know, let us know one way or another. And don't forget the Facebook group. Remember, that's another way of us keeping in touch with one another and building this wonderful community. Over to you, Rob. Thank you very much. Yes. So for this week, um, the only we had a couple of comments on a few of the the valuable kind of takeaway lessons that we've learned this week. And um, I think one of them really comes down to context, which I'm probably going to say every week. A record number of times each time. He repeats but, um, himself. I do repeat myself. But um, uh, the key thing is really that the answers to a lot of the questions we pose is it depends on your context and we want to enrich the course with a variety of contexts where we can leave understanding that none of these uh, principles, these ideas are true across all EMI contexts. Mm. So English as a medium of instruction, there are a lot of motivations, a lot of practices, different students involved and the most interesting answers to questions and the really insightful ideas that are being shared are coming um, from this view of that you're taking the ideas we're presenting and discussing them within your context and your experience mm. which really breathes life into these ideas and it's really interesting to yes. learn yeah. you know because again any idea whether it's accuracy um, types of English ways of speaking there's never one value to them mm -hmm. there are always times when you might need or things might have different values in different contexts so mm -hmm. it really mm -hmm. is all about context mm -hmm. and we value I hope you value reading other people's comments mm -hmm. on how language is perceived in their context and also um, consider that in relation to your own because not we're not all the same no. and that's the beauty of that's the beauty of the of it, isn't it? EMI community yeah. is that we have to value that we're not all the yeah. same. Yeah. So fantastic discussions going on. Yeah. yeah. And can I come in at this point, Rob, please and just do, say that uh, one of the things I would encourage you to do, I did mention it last week, but if you can, and I know that everybody's pressed for time, but if you can go back to previous weeks, we have people still joining the course. We have people still reacting and commenting and questioning things that have been said. So if you can go back, you may find that there are more things to discuss about 
one of the aspects, for example, that Rob has just um, raised. And you will get a lot out of going backwards as well as, you know, going forwards with the course. So if I can encourage you to do that, I think you'll find it very, very valuable. Shall we discuss those questions now that Salem and Deborah asked? Yes, yes, we can. Yes, um, I've got them here, if you can just bear with me a moment. Yes, um, there was a common thread actually between these two questions uh, because it's basically about the status of non-native English speakers. Um, Salam raises the issue of we still see um, advertisements for jobs, um, even at school, as for being native speaker, whatever your specialisation is, and issues of unemployment as a result. And then Deborah, or Deborah, um, I'd like to know how is a native, non-native speaker seen as a teacher in the EMI context? Native speakers still have a huge status above non-native ones everywhere around the world. And then she goes to talk on That's about... In English language about, In teaching. English language. Mm. Um, talks about the CELTA and the IELTS exams and so on. Um, would you like to start, Rob, and then I'll come in with my ideas as well? Absolutely, it's yes. It's a big area. It is a huge area. Yeah. And um, yeah, again, there are lots of, uh, sort of levels that this operates mm. on. So thinking about the functions of a university, the functions of courses and the different organisations involved, um, there are different answers for different yeah. stages. We have, I think we, there's always ideology at play and we struggle really to, we want to encourage um, awareness raising and fighting against um, discrimination of some people over other people based on their language background because yes. there's no real basis for that. Mm. Um, and I would like to say, you know, in I'm a member of a number of organisations that ban advertisements that ask for native speakers mm. directly because it is seen as discrimination. Yes. So you're not allowed to post mm. advertisements on lots of sites in my discipline, which is applied linguistics. Uh, you're not allowed to post advertisements for roles saying mm. we want native speakers of English because that's seen as a form of discrimination against the person who should be, essentially you shouldn't be employing someone based on their national background. Mm. Um, so there's that level, but there are also more subtle ideological workings in universities, ways that discrimination occurs in how courses are advertised, what faces are used to publicise like the or give legitimacy to EMI courses that like come mm. here for an international yeah. experience? How is that international experience advertised on websites, mm. on course documents? And there's been a lot of research on that and the implicit kind of ideology that exists that clearly favour people from certain backgrounds and also certain kinds of English. Because if that's in all the documentation and all the advertisements, it's going to be very difficult for teachers mm. who are getting students who've, who've been exposed to that kind of discourse, who then get into the classroom. And now we're saying, but it doesn't matter, you know, if you speak with a certain accent, it doesn't matter if you, if you, uh, if you use English in diverse ways in the classroom, as long as understanding is maintained and a good mm. academic discussion is is fostered then that's wonderful however when you have competing discourses that can be very difficult yeah. to so those ideologies are incredibly powerful and incredibly damaging and you are right that um, it can lead to employment issues discrimination as i said and um, an unfair advantage for people from some backgrounds compared to others and students who get the wrong idea about language and communication because yes. the global world doesn't yes. look like that. You know, yeah. we don't want to create an artificial environment where experts all sound the same mm. because they don't. That's not the world now. No. So no. I don't know if you want to add anything. To um, yeah, I mean, we can totally understand why uh, a school might advertise that their teachers are native English speakers. We understand why they do it. Um, but we do believe that um, it's not really a good thing to do. And how are we going to change this? Well, it's really down to people like you, 
because you are in the vanguard, in the front of this movement, EMI, English Medium um, Instruction. And when you come across cases uh, which aren't completely right, you know, according to our viewpoint, um, you, you are the ones that have to push forward to draw people's attention to this and to give good reasons why it's not right, it's not appropriate. So um, you have to take on this challenge. It's a challenge that I'm sure is going to exist for a long time still. We're not going to be able to dismiss it just like that. Um, so if I can somehow transmit to you the strength and the motivation to, to try and make things better in your local context when these issues come up, thinking of the future of your future colleagues so that they might have an easier time of it. But it does uh, require a concerted effort on the part of, of a lot of people, well you guys really. Um, um, you know sometimes I wish Rob, I wish that I weren't a native English speaker, you know, because I empathise so much with the challenges and the battle that you have and I kind of want to be a part of it. But I can't be a part of it because I'm a native English speaker. You're part of the problem. I'm there, part right? of the problem, yes. yes. <laughs> so all we can do is help you, you know, in this space. We can help mm. you to create this space and to try and say that, yes, there are people behind you and there's a lot of research going on in this. There's a lot of literature you can read. Mm. So it's all there to support you if you want to move forward in this area. Yeah. And it is, it is an ongoing problem because yeah. you also mentioned, or Deborah also mentioned the um, the examinations and things like that. And where you have, for example, with IELTS, the speaking test, you have descriptors for level nine, which is the top band. And it says only makes mistakes that native speakers would make. It, when you have descriptors like that, yeah. then, I mean, even how we measure language proficiency, regardless of saying, are you native or not native? If you say I'm IELTS level nine, you're kind of favouring one kind of English over others. And then, so the problem is much deeper than just favouring some people over others. We also mm. measure in a way that prioritises um, mm. certain forms of language education, certain forms of language use over others. And it's not all just about the, the speaker themselves, it's also about the language that's valued. Yes. So even yeah. non-native non speakers can speak a standard way which would maybe benefit them but shouldn't necessarily so mm. yeah mm. it's a long and ongoing problem it's yeah. a long and ongoing problem and realize that the um, examination boards the examination syndicates will be the last to change they're very conservative and until movement happens with the examination boards then this battle will be a very very hard and long fought one mm. Mm. Shall yes. we move on to cheery, I Let's, think? Yes. I, yeah. I, I feel a little bit negative. Um, yeah. um, <laughs> so we'd like to thank you. I think it's yes. ongoing. I think some mm. people are going through week two a little bit um, mm. carefully and slowly. Some people are catching up still. Mm. Um, but uh, we were going to mention the videos and to thank, you, oh, thank yes. you for sharing examples of um, lectures and talks that would work in an EMI context for you. And then you described why they would work. And this is really effective, I think, and it brings up both contextual considerations, considering your audience, but also your discipline, because we'll find there's not, no one way of doing EMI. Mm -hmm. It's going to depend on what kind of knowledge do you want to communicate? What kind of engagement do you want with students? And the examples have been fantastic. Oh, wonderful examples. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Thatcher Pan. Um, chose one of my favourites, which is Amy Cuddy, talking about body language. And you might like to watch that um, in preparation for what comes up in weeks three and four. And then there was a lovely one, I can't remember who chose it, but the speaker was um, Carol Dweck. And I think the title is Believing That You Can Succeed. And rather than um, saying that a student has failed you give them the feedback hmm, not yet and I hadn't heard that before I don't know if you've heard it Rob I probably but said it. 
you've probably <laughs> said it. But I thought, yeah, what a positive way of helping students who haven't quite made it to realise, yeah, you're not there yet, but you can be soon. So rather than saying, no, you failed, you say, not yet, you know, but you can get there. So, you know, the, these different ideas of motivating people um, and lots of other ideas that can come into your teaching um, do please if you have the time look at some of those videos that have been suggested and recommended by your colleagues on this course because there are some absolute gems mm. 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 thank yeah. you so much yes thank you and one other final point to mention is that we will be going along uh, through the course and pinning mm. um, particularly oh, yes. interesting comments which means that they will go to the top of that week's uh, comment list so we'll go back through week one and week two and mm. and points that have come up that have created a lot of discussion or were particularly interesting, maybe two different views mm. on a topic. Maybe we're going to pin those, maybe mm. controversial. Yes. Um, yeah, we'll put those to the top of yeah. the comment list. So um, to make it easier when you have 350 yeah. comments, you can see a quick yeah. best of best of yeah. yes okay. yeah which is another reason for going backwards as well as forwards Indeed. yeah yes so, so yes I think. I think that's everything for this week isn't yes. it yes yeah. so um have a good week everybody yes and thank you very much again for watching this and joining thank us thank you very very mm. much indeed and we'll see you next week yes. all right bye-bye bye-bye